Simple question. Can you beat Fallout 4 with only the prototype Rail Raid rifle? This was a horrible idea, but I started up a new game and I tried to spread out my skills as much as possible, the only exception being luck, which I put at 10 because I wanted to try to get some critical hits. The world then goes to shit and after 200 years, we get them frozen and we can start the run. Because I don't have the prototype rifle, I can't damage enemies. So I have to lock the ride archers behind the door, but I'm clearly not very good at it because one gets through and he then nips at my heels the entire time while I'm trying to grab the pistol and stim packs before I finally lock his ass in the bedroom and continue on to the rest of the vault. I have to do the same things to his friends in the main room and after hiding in this corner to get un aggroed, I pick up the pit boy and we can leave the vault. Once I get down the hill, I meet with Codsworth, immediately ditch him and grab the book for one more agility point before marking the railroad hideout and started walking. I get to the Old North Church and decide it would be a great idea to attract all the ghouls to me before walking into what I thought was a stairway but it was a dead end that got me killed. The second time was just as bad the only difference was i made it to the end of the tunnel before getting beaten to death fun fact did you know ghouls could open doors because i sure as hell didn't until i got a real surprise when this guy did i tried to make a run for it and it ended as well as you would expect next time around i got past both ghouls then cemented my place in the top 10 worst decisions of all time when i go back open the door for the ghoul and then somehow get away with it. Insane decision on my part, but it doesn't matter because once I get myself into this corner, all progress stops for the next 30 minutes. This one ghoul was the bane of my existence for those 30 minutes. Specifically, his pathing fucking sucks and he never stands still. Then there's the issue of this stupid fucking code. For those of you that don't remember, like I didn't remember, to access the railroad, you have to put in their super secret fucking code into this dumb dial which which normally isn't too bad, you just stand there, you put it in and you're good. But with a constantly moving ghoul that can insta kill you if you're found, it's goddamn near impossible. Also, in case you haven't caught on, I can't stand in front of it because if I do, he will instantly catch me. My only option is to crouch beside it, hope the letters are lined up correctly and input the code. From my perspective, I put that fucking code in correctly. 30 times but the game no 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 the game didn't think so so I picked a fight with the ghoul and he kicked my fucking ass. Not surprised, but you know, what can you do? About six more minutes of trying the same stupid fucking strategy that wasn't working, I still couldn't get the door open, so I take out a pistol, kill the motherfucker, kill his friend that shows up, and I put the code in correct. So I reloaded, tried it again, and got it first try. No fucking clue. I did nothing different. I have no idea why it worked this time, but whatever were it. I talked to Desdemona and Deacon and then hit a literal brick wall when I forgot you need to do the switchboard before they let you into the actual railroad. That was a hell of a gut punch I was not expecting. Before that though, I'm getting some fucking revenge on these ghouls. So I led them into the room and they got mowed down by Gloria and the rest of the railroad. Let me tell you, that felt good but not as good as me beating the shit out of them last challenge. Now that might sound a bit confusing, but give me a second, I'll explain the timeline. First, I met up with Deacon and after the 10 minute filler episode, we get into the switchboard, he kills one enemy, and that's why I call it for the night. Now, you might be asking why are you calling up so early, you've only been playing for like an hour and a half. And yes, you're right. But this was recorded right after the State of the K2 Guns Only Challenge, which finished at about 8 in the morning. So it's now about 11 in the morning, and I did not have the patience to deal with the switchboard after dealing with that goal for 30 fucking minutes. So that's where I called it. About two weeks later, after I recorded a whole nother challenge, I came back to this one and tried to complete this train wreck of a fucking run. It's still all on Deacon, because I can't do shit here. It's mostly me just waiting for him to kill all the synths and hoping he gets them all and doesn't let one just go right past him so it chases me for a good minute before he notices and kills it. Besides that, we actually got pretty far, but we got pushed back through the tunnels and I, for some reason, tried to hide on top of it, hoping the synth wouldn't notice me, but he does, and guess who hasn't saved and got reset all the way back to the start. I did not have the patience to wait for him to kill all the synths again, so I just ran and it was going really well until I took a wrong turn, got stuck, and shot in the hallway. Looking back, I needed Deacon to open the vault anyway, so this was fucking pointless. That last time though, I did remember to save halfway through, so I respawned here, and I was waiting for Deacon to catch up, but he never did. So I had to reload, and we're back at ground zero anyway. 
Against every impulsive bone in my body, I waited for Deacon to take out all the synths and after 15 minutes we finally get into the vault, I grabbed the prototype and I did not want to deal with any more fucking synths. So I just backtracked and took the entrance out. We get to Desdemona and we're finally in the hideout. This is the guy that has the weapon I need, but he only has the weapon during a specific cutscene that I tried to get for 7 minutes before it finally triggered. Once I saw the cutscene, I dropped a quick save, I went in for the pickpocket, but I didn't see the gun. So I reloaded, I tried it with the stuff boy, and I still wasn't seeing it. I then looked in the skills menu and discovered you have to be level 17 to pickpocket an equipped weapon. So I did the only thing I could and started grinding levels. An hour and a half later, and I was just shy of level 17, but I ran out of materials at Sanctuary, and I knew I had a few quests in Diamond City I could quickly knock out. One was the interview with Piper, the other one was meeting Ellie for Nick's information. With that, we're finally level 17, and we can try for the gun again. Halfway through the grind, I was starting to get really paranoid that the cutscene wouldn't trigger again, but luckily it did, and I used the Stealth Boy, and we can actually see the gun this time. I go in for the pick pocket and I thought I got the pickpocket so I just ran for it now I never pickpocket because if I want something I become Benny and I take it I got all the fucking way back to sanctuary before I noticed I didn't have the gun then I did the exact same fucking thing but at least this time I noticed inside the hideout and reloaded after about two minutes of trying to pickpocket this thing I pickpocketed the spikes first then the rest of his shit then the gun, and I walked away like nothing happened. I went back to Diamond City because I wanted to stock up on some ammo before going to dance and helping him clear out the police station. And let me tell you, this is the first time I ever attempted using this gun, and oh boy, it's not good. It's very not fucking good. <laughs> but I still had hope. Not much, but it was there. I tried to help, but it was honestly the equivalent of giving your younger brother a controller that's not plugged in. Also, I'm on very easy, and it's basically doing no damage. And I knew this. I knew this going in. I looked up the stats before even thinking of this dumb fucking idea. But man, I was not expecting it to be this bad. Anyways, I let Dan's handle the rest of the police station. We have a quick chat and we then head off to Arcjack. Once we get there, I did try to cheese it and go in through the back, but the elevator was off, so we had to go in through the front. But with the walking tank that is Dan's, this was super easy. We got the deep range transmitter, no issue. I agreed to join the Brotherhood and then went to Park Street Station to save Nick. I actually tried to fight this guy, even got sneak attack damage, but it did jack all. So I said fuck it and started running. Before I got to the vault entrance, I used one of my last stealth boys and got the door open just in time for it to run out and for me to start running again. I then make it to Dino, struggled to even get on the computer to hack it, I managed to get into Nick room, <laughs> and then I discovered Nick can't do shit if you have enemies on you. So this plan is not gonna work. And it got so much fucking worse before I realized and reloaded. With the revelation that I can't just brute force this and run directly to Nick, I have two issues. One is the guys chasing me, which I have to lose every time I reload. And then there's Dino that no matter where I hid, he found me every time. Until I found this room that completely concealed me until he left and I could actually go talk to Nick. The original plan was to sneak out, but that immediately failed. And after seeing Nick on the ground with only a pipe revolver, I said fuck it and I started gum bashing because my only other option was to outright end the challenge and I did not want to do that. Unlike the other one where it was pretty clear when I failed, this is a bit more gray because I'm still using the prototype rifle. I'm just hitting them over the head with it rather than shooting them with it. So, do I fail? Do I not? I really don't know. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Let me know what you think. But anyways, now that my controls is actually plugged in, I can actually defend myself and the rest of the vault isn't too bad. We could even take down Dino within a minute compared to like 30 if I had to shoot him with the rifle. Once again failing to convince Skinny Malone to let us go, I shoot him, which does fucking nothing, but after 4 minutes of killing the rest of his people, I beat him to death in a corner, we leave and we meet back up in Diamond City. After talking about my kidnapped kid and dead wife, I steal Kellogg's house key off of Mayor McDonough, grab the cigarettes he so generously left behind and started tracking him with dogmen. I steer very fucking clear what the hell is going on over there and get to 4 Hagen without stumbling upon any more Death Claw conventions. Once inside, I just started knocking them around, and you think I would have learned my lesson from last time not to activate this guy, 
but I didn't, and he once again betrays me, so I killed him. 25 minutes later of going through Fort Hagen, I get to Kellogg, and I have the response I think any good father would have, and just start beating the shit out of him. Once he goes invisible, I turn my attention to his two guards, I take both of them out before locating Kellogg, getting him stuck in this corner, and just wailing on him until he goes down. I collected the data I needed, and went back to Valentine and Piper. We agreed to meet a good neighbor to do a whole filler episode that is Kellogg's brain, but before that, I go back to dance, grab my free power armor, and then meet up with Valentine. No detour this time, so I go directly to Virgil's cave, run for my fucking life when I see the Duff Claw, and we make it in. I need the Corsair chip for him to even consider giving me the plants for the teleporter, so off to Green Tech we go. I don't even bother with the gunners, I run straight past them, and the fight with the Corsair might as well have just been a reskin collect fight. I get him stuck in a corner, and I don't stop till he drops. I went back to the railroad to get the chip decoded, and this is where the run really went off the rails. Unlike the Brotherhood, I don't remember shit about this quest line. And this is a real issue because I started another set of needs your help quest, but the railroad version. First, it was Tom with his Mila devices that I needed to place on top of roofs. Then, I picked up a dead drop and had to meet Old Man Stockton to help him with an escape synth. If we were already off track, the train's going downhill towards a fucking river at this point. Because during the escort, this dumb fucking AI got us into a fight with super mutants that took way too long to take care of before getting back on track and actually finishing the mission. I turned the mission into the doctor, but by this point, I was getting a little suspicious I was just wasting my time. To my surprise, I took one more mission from him, but by the time I got there, I was really fucking suspicious. So I looked up the quest line and realized I had been wasting the last 40 minutes just fucking around with filler quests. So I get back on track, I head to Virgil, and I grab the teleporter plans from him. For those that haven't realized, my plan is to side with the railroad, so I'm going to build a teleporter with them. They wanted me to build a teleporter at Hangman's Alley, but after killing all the cycles, I scrapped the settlement, took all the materials, and built it in Sanctuary. Just before teleporting, Desimond tells me about an inside guy helping Synths escape, but they don't know who the hell he is, so I have to make contact. And that's exactly what I did the second I got into the Institute. But before we can meet, I have to talk with Father. Once I'm done with him, he lets me explore the Institute with absolutely no oversight, which is probably not the best choice, but I meet up with Liam, the inside guy, then he shows me his inside guy, and we start making a plan to get 13 cents out. The only problem is Liam, and the fact that he can't hack into an old MIT computer, so we're gonna need an old fashioned username and password. Once I get back to Desdemona, I tell him about Liam's plan and the issue with the MIT computer, then they make me write a fucking report on it, which to me is insane they would even suggest that, but I have to do it anyways, and they tell me that the password I seek is in the old Cambridge Polymer Lab. When I get there, Molly offers me a job, and I see where it goes. I go through the whole orientation, get escorted into the lab, and then get locked inside until I can complete the project. So, nothing has changed in 200 years. Good to see. I first had to deal with all the scientists, but once they went down, I got inside the main lab, I find the computer with the username and password on it, and I also find another way out of the lab, which, even looking at the footage, I don't know how I triggered that but I was able to leave the lab and get back to Desdemona. She then decides it's time to not only rescue 13 cents, but all the cents. She also decides that Liam can't be trusted and we should cut him loose after we get what we want from him, which is pretty cold. But for once, I agree, and so does Z1. So I meet up with Liam for one last time, give him the username and password, and we never see him again. I then have to wait the 24 hours for Z1 to get back to me, then he's surprised how many synths would actually take up arms against the institute. That being said, we still have the issue that they don't have any arms to take up. So we put a plan together to fix that. Option number one was stashing weapons in closet 3B, which the institute generously donated to that effort. Option number two, was a bit bloodier but allowed the synths to blow the tunnel and build their own weapons in peace until it was time to fight. I completed both options but then I was told to keep working with father aka the slave master until everything was ready. 
Now, with context, yes, this makes sense. But the fact that they have to piggyback off of another faction's entire questline just seems like lazy ass writing, but I have no options, so I started working with Father. First, he informs me of a rogue synth that has become the leader of Libertaria, and it's my job to get him back in the Institute. The walk up to him is actually pretty easy. My only where it's falling in the water because I have power I'm on, and I would have to walk all the way back to shore if I fell in. Luckily, I didn't trip, and I was able to get up to him with ease. Honestly, after the walk up here, I did not want to try to convince them to come back with us peacefully, so I just used the recall code, which of course pissed off his friends, but I dealt with him, and once the Corsair teleported back with him, I threw myself off the boat and teleported myself back as well. The next mission on the docket was the assault on Bunker Hill, and I was going to inform the railroad, but it doesn't matter if you do or not. They're still here, so I don't even waste the time, I go directly to the Corsair and we attack the place. AKA, I just run past everything until I get to the bottom with the sense. I then may or may not have betrayed the Corsair and revealed my true nature, but father would never know because he's a fucking moron. <laughs> After laying him out and finishing up with the sense, I get lost inside the MIT building for way too fucking long, but I finally find my way up to father and then start dodging his questions harder than Neo. He doesn't push on what happened at Bunker Hill and apparently the futuristic death robots don't have any cameras on them to show my clear betrayal of the Institute. Then he literally puts me in charge of the Institute. What the fuck is this story, dude? But fuck it, mass fusion. We teleport in, easily get to the basement and grab the beryllium agitator. On the way out, I was able to take out the sentry bot first try, but he got his revenge when he blew up and killed me. Normally this isn't such a big deal, but I for some reason reloaded back to Diamond City and left it there. Now all the footage you've seen so far was recorded before either of these videos were edited and released, and I didn't take any notes. So that brings me to the point, I came back to this run two months later and didn't know what the fuck was going on. I figured out that I was doing mass fusion, so I teleported back to the institute, started again, and once I located the Berlin Magistrator, I didn't take the elevator like a normal pleb, no no. I jumped off the fucking roof straight to the ground floor and walked in like I owned a place. I grabbed it once again and I started trying different things to get past this area. I first tried just running past everything and see if I could open up the elevators without having to kill them all. Uh, but no, you have to kill them all and I was trying to accomplish that before I got disintegrated. One thing I should mention is before I started trying this challenge again, my one worried was the turrets and the reactor room because I thought I would have to take them out to unlock the area, which isn't the case, but I spent four minutes and about 25 shots to do this little amount of damage. Also, I am 100% sure you can't do more damage than this with this weapon because they are regenerating health after every shot, which is bullshit, but I understand throwing a DPS check in there sometimes. With this discovery, next time around, I decided to fight the robots and see if the elevator would open. Which to my surprise, it did and we're good to go. I get back to the institute and I hand over the Berlin agitator to Ali. We then get sent off to recover a scientist and this is another one of those cases where I get all the fucking choices wrong and nothing different happens. We still get the sciences and there's no way for me to do it differently other than get a speech check. Great storytelling guys, just fucking fantastic. I then had to record some speech for the commonwealth and rearrange the transmitters for it to work. I don't know man, this is canon, but it might as well be filler. Anyways, I get back to farther at the reactor room, we finally activate it and one meeting later, we get the news that the railroad is about to be attacked by the brotherhood. We get there just ahead of the Brotherhood and start knocking heads when they come in. This first area wasn't too bad and it didn't take much time. But after Gloria kicks the bucket, the tunnel here was a constant flow of Brotherhood and Paramour which were not easy to take down just with gun bashing. Then after all that, there was the main area of the church which was super open, had two different Brotherhood Knights and Paramour and there was a bunch of people shitting me out for the balcony. So I had to leave, go by Stimpaks, come back, and then I was finally able to take them down. With that last devastating attack from the Brotherhood, it's time to activate Red Glory. First up was taking over the Cambridge Police Station, which we did do after a lot of difficulty, not only with the Brotherhood, but their turrets, which without Deacon, would have ended the run. After cleaning up the stragglers, Tinker Tom started hijacking the Vertibird. Of course, the Brotherhood heard about our attack and sent one of their own Vertibirds, which I don't want to sound like a broken record, but without Deacon, this run would have ended because there was no fucking way in hell I was about to shoot down a Vertibird with this thing. 
But after Deacon takes it down, we get airborne and we get to the Pridwin with no issue. The plan is to plant explosives on the helium bags of the Pridwin and blow it the fuck up. I, for some reason, also wanted to steal another set of power for the final push on Institute. Also, also, I'm naked because I sold all my armor to buy the stim packs when I was dealing with the whole church issue. All this is important information for what happens next. Now, I'm not a moron. I know if I walk in there completely naked, I'm going to get murked in two seconds. So I used my last stealth boy. I was able to plant all the explosives before I got caught and still decided to go for the power armor, which, you know, went exactly as you would expect. <laughs> The second time around, I foregoed the power armor plan and just planted the explosives and tried to get out. But again, I'm naked and the guy at the bottom of the ladder had a minigun ready to rip me apart. And of course, it wouldn't be a Fallout 4 challenge without a death loop. So for the third time, I was actually able to get it done so quickly that my stealth boy was still activated. And when I got down the ladder, I was able to sneak right past him. The exit was a bit rough, but it still resulted in the same outcome. Only one faction left that matters, so I meet up with Z1 in the control room and we take out everyone before bringing in the railroad. I run past as many enemies as possible because I don't have the armor, stim packs, or caps left to resupply. I did run into this locked door and had to kill the synths, but looking back, I might have just been able to go straight to Father and open the door without fighting. But regardless, after the fight, I met with Father, became an evil motherfucker for a second, bonked him on the head, and opened doors to plant the charges. We teleport back to the main room. I once again refuse to accept my son as my son, and with one button pressed later, that's time. Like I said at the beginning, this was a terrible fucking idea, and it definitely didn't help that it took me three months to actually complete this challenge and I did not remember shit about it and did not feel like taking notes at the time. So, you know, past me fucking future me, but what's new at this point? Anyways, if you did enjoy this challenge, please like and subscribe. And if you have any other challenge ideas for me or any other comments about it, please let me know down below. This one goal was the bane in my existence for those 30 minutes. Bespis fuck. <laughs> This one goal was the bane of my existence for those fucking 30 minutes. Bispis fuck I did it again. <laughs> Shit. I don't make them say fuck up twice. Fuck. Also, in case you haven't gotten the point, I can't stand in front of it because you will instantly catch me. My only option is to crouch behind it. Behind it. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, I let hit fuck hit hands. Fuck. I steer very fucking clear where the hell was going on over there, and I get to Fort Hagen without spun. <laughs> I don't think this line's gonna work, cause this is a bitch to say. <laughs> I need the courser chip for him to even consider giving me the plans for the pelo. <laughs> Fuck, goddamn it, peloporter? What would, what would that even be? <laughs> chat, chat, I'm, chat. I'm not, I'm not Twitch streaming. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind is what I'm doing. Man, these are going to be some blah. <laughs> God damn it. How do I make a blooper with an, with, oh my God. All right, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep making bloopers and bloopers. This is not going to work. I went back to the railroad to get the cheap to, fuck. <laughs> to my surprise, I took one more mission from him, but, 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 fuck. For those that haven't realized, I plan to side with the Brotherhood, so I'm going to build the teleporter with them. It's not the Brotherhood. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> when I get there, Molly offers me a job, and I see where it goes. I go through the whole orientation, get escorted into the lab, and get locked inside until I can complete the project. So, nothing has changed in 20... Fuck. <laughs> Come on, man. Just read the numbers. It's not hard. <laughs> So I meet with Liam for the last time, give him the username and password, and we never see him again. Never know what happens to him. Maybe he gets killed, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. This is going on for way too long. 